Yeah, I really got into my books of late and the vicar suggested I go to a book club that he runs. And reading this, I genuinely felt like I was reading a diary yes. of a vampire. Yes. It's absolutely wonderful having Kerry in the book club. Um, she's, I think, getting so much out of it. I was clearing out Jacob's room and I found a box of all his old Goosebumps books. So I gave them to Kerry and she has devoured them. I've got uh, the Blob Day, everyone. Uh, say Cheese and Die. Uh, a Shocker on Shock Street. That's really shocking. The book club used to be run by a lady called Margaret, and as can happen with these things, it had become a bit of a closed shop. But Margaret's moved on, and I'm running it now, and I'm keen the group should be open to everyone, particularly those who might uh, not be the most advanced readers or might lack a bit of confidence. And it's amazing to see people come out of their shell. Next time is Colin's suggestion, and it's an all-time classic, The Jungle Book. Colin, would you quickly like to say why you chose this one? No? It's OK, <laughs> never mind. Um, well, have fun reading, everyone. Lovely. So how are you doing then, Curtin? <laughs> Out awake, absolute joke. Oh, I thought it was a lovely day. I thought you gave Ray a proper send-off that he would have been proud of. Really? It was like an advert for Mitsubishi. Is there really nothing else anyone can say about him other than the fact he worked at fucking Mitsubishi? Curtain language. Sorry, but come on. Everyone was more interested in that power punch machine than they were paying their respects. I went round with a condolences book for people to sign and Martin signed it R.I.P. Roy. And he was Ray's uncle, for crying out loud. Roy! How can someone's life be so meaningless? No one's life is meaningless, Curtin. Oh, that's what it feels like. Because if that was my funeral, I'd be absolutely raging. And now he'd just be forgotten about, like Flat Eric. Who's Flat Eric? Exactly. Look, Ray will not be forgotten because he'll live on in the memories that you have of him. I have no memories of him. I barely knew the man. Well, <laughs> this is a good chance for you to find out about him then. I'm sure the rest of the family have some great stories about Ray. He was probably a lot more interesting than you give him credit for. Do you think? Hmm. Yeah, maybe. I made up my own McDonald's burger. Yeah. By combining two burgers. Yeah. It's called Air, Land and Sea, so it's a fillet of fish yeah. burger with um, a chicken burger. Yeah. Oi. A Oi. chicken sandwich. I heard about your half brother. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cheers, man. Yeah, you think that's bad? My whole brother died once. Oh. 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 So, sorry to hear that, man. Why are you sorry? I... So, sorry that he died. Oh, do you know Kevin? Do you know Kevin? No. No. Nah. Why are you sorry, then? Well, I'm sorry for you. Well, why? I hated him. I'm glad he's dead, all the wicked things he's done. Again, he's burning in hell. I'm smiling my head off. Oh. So, welcome to Book Club, everyone, and a very warm welcome to a new face, Mandy Harris. It's so lovely to have new members. Welcome, Mandy. Um, so, The Jungle Book. How did everyone get on with it? Yes, Kayleigh. I think identity plays a big part in this world and the nature-nurture debate, because I think Mowgli struggles with his sense of belonging in the two worlds. No. Uh, sorry, Kayleigh, carry on. And, um, carry on. I think we see this when he gets frustrated that you can't do the things all the animals can do, mm. like smelling. That's wrong. Yes, it's great to have new members. It's important that the club is inclusive of everyone, no matter how experienced a reader you are. And each new member 
brings a unique and different perspective, which is always welcomed and creates good, healthy debate. I don't know about the rest of you. I think I would love to be friends with Baloo. He's that big brother you always wanted, isn't he? He's not the big brother I wanted. He's well, an idiot. Um, uh, next time, we'll be reading something a little spookier. Kerry, maybe you'd like to explain your choice? Uh, this is Goosebumps. Don't know if you're familiar with the Goosebumps books. And this is called Piano Lessons Can Be Murder. And let's just say, after you read this, you won't be taking piano lessons anytime soon. Why? Uh, well, I don't... Uh, you'll find out when you read it. Uh, no, I... You tell me anyway, cos I probably won't read it anyway. Well, you might read it. No, I ain't going to read it. OK. Uh, it's basically about a boy called Jerry who takes piano lessons and finds out his piano teacher is a robot. And then what happens? He uh, murders people, just chops off everyone's hands, that's the end. Probably would have read that, so if you hadn't ruined the ending. Well done. Right. So how do you think book club went? Um... <clears throat> Well, uh, I think I know why you're asking that question. Oh, uh, why would that be, do you think? Mandy... Yeah? <clears throat> has ...was like an atomic bomb blasting book club and all the books in it within a 40,000-mile radius. Kerry, I, I just think she was getting the hang of it. Oh, you she, think she was getting the hang of it? Oh, the right, just rules. totally dominating the whole thing. Yes. Being rude to Kaylee. I had to look after Kaylee. Kaylee was in tears afterwards. Oh, so I just thought I'd let you know that we both um, are now non-members of Book Club. No, wait a second, Kerry. No, we're Kerry. walking out. It's either her or us. Kerry, it doesn't need to be like that. I'm going to talk to Mandy, all right? What are you You've got say to give to me her? a chance. You need to say, I'll do what you have to say, Mandy, this behaviour is mental, yeah? You have to not come to book club anymore. In fact, you're no, banned. Kerry, you need to seek book. mental health and not come to book club. Kerry, That's what you need to say. Hold on one second, please. Can I speak? Book club is for everyone. And yeah, that's the way not, it's going to nuts. remain. Is that a train coming in? Is it? Yeah, train's coming. Thank the Lord! Here he comes, here he comes. Can you see him? Where is he? He's not here. Oh, for fuck's sake. He must be getting the next one. Yeah, and that ain't coming in for another 45 minutes. It's so annoying. It's really annoying. Do you know what? That's so typical of him. That sort of airy-fairy attitude. I wouldn't be surprised if he's just wandered onto the Hogwarts Express because his head's so in the fucking clouds. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. That man is about as street smart as Will Fell in Elf. The vicar is not street smart. Like, this one time he got into a conversation at Swindon bus station with a prostitute about the weather, and a pimp ended up charging him £500 for the pleasure of her company. Yeah, and as he was walking the vicar to the cash point, the vicar tried to snap his bank card in his pocket, but the pimp noticed and slapped him around the back of the head, took his money and then nicked his Fitbit for good measure. Lost a whole month's worth of step data that was on it. Don't ever... Pull tricks on a pimp. Who's that? Oh, fuck's sake, it's Peggy. Who's Peggy? Fucking Faf Moisture General from Camera Club. 
Hello, Peggy? Yes, speaking. Yes, hi, Peggy, I said that. Yeah. Okay, code. Mm. Yes. Code. F okay. Okay, yeah. Code, code for the door is, is 2146, okay? <clears throat> 2146. Okay, yeah, get a pen. <clears throat> Hello? Yes, Peggy. Have you got a pen? Yes, I'm still here. Right. 2146. 21, yeah, 46. <sighs> Two turtle doves, right? One on its own is in number one. Four as in G4. Six as in the number six, spelled S-I-X. No, no, the G, the G was just a, re a reference point to what the number, it, two, one, four, six. Two, oh, wow. one, four, six. No G, no, because it's just, it's just numbers on the, on the door code. It's, the, listen, shh, two, one, four, six. Two, Two what? Oh, I, sorry, I just. <sighs> Hello. Yeah. Oh right. Oh god. Okay. <sighs> right. Uh, no, that, that wasn't me. No, it's got nothing to do with me. No, chickens is. Well, yeah, that's Kerry's fit. Well, I'll pass you over then. Okay. Cheers, Mrs. Wicks. To you. Hello? How's me cuckalux? What? But I I shut I was sure I shut the door. <sighs> what about Edna? Okay, well, thanks for calling. Yeah. What was that about? Somebody left the door open on the chicken coop. Fox got in. Daryl gone. What, they escaped? They're gone, gone. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Vicar won't be happy, I don't think. The Paris chickens. He's had them a while as well. He loved them. You can't trust care of anything. Because you'll either break it or sell it. Or just let it be killed. I remember at school, Kerry babysat my Tamagotchi. By the time I got it back, the screen was so full of turd, it was just a wash with pixelated shite. Another innocent life snuffed out by that oaf. Vicar better be on this train. No, he won't. This is a Hereford train. Won't be on it, unfortunately. Hey, what do you fancy for dinner tonight? Don't think I'll eat anything. Quite fancy some chicken kievs. What a fucking dickish thing to say. Why would you fucking say that? Do you know anywhere I can get some chicken meat from? From some freshly slaughtered chickens. Oh, well, you should know. What do you mean? You know what everyone calls you is chicken boy. Why? 
Because you look like a chicken and your great big nose and your fucking spindly little oh, chicken right, legs. Oh, that's per getting personal. Yeah, yeah thanks I for will that. get well personal. Done. You're just bitter because you killed your chickens. Let them get slaughtered by a fox. What? Ow! The fucking what dare you doing? say that? Yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, anyway. I would. You wouldn't. You wouldn't. Oh, try me. Give me the shoe back. Give me the shoe back. I went to Bristol to see Jacob. Yeah. yeah. Well, that wasn't the only reason I was there. I also met the Archbishop. Mm. Right. Mm. Yes, I met him to discuss me moving parish to Bristol. Right. And what does that mean? Well, it would mean I would be leaving the village to take up a new parish in Bristol. Leaving the village? Why? I just feel it's a good time for a new challenge. I think that's a really bad idea. Yeah, that, that seems utter madness to me. Look, look, I know it won't be easy, but... my job is not to stay comfortable and much as I love it here with you all, um, I need to help people. I don't quite know what to say to that. But, you, uh, but you've got everything you need here. Who's yeah. decided this? Well, it, it's the Archbishop who, who, who decides the it. But it also who even my... is the Archbishop? I've never heard of the Archbishop yeah, before, but till today, and then you're, you're dancing to the sound of his flute. If the Archbishop told you to kick a dog in the face, would you? No, but if he asks me to change parish, then yes, I would. <sighs> That's terrifying. You're like a Sims character to the Archbishop. He can pick you up and plonk you down wherever he likes you. You yeah. just go along with it. What, what about us? What, what are we going to do? Yeah. Well, I think you're both mature enough for me to go. Oh, no, we're not. Especially her. I am me and I know I am not mature, am I? She's not mature. Well, I think you are mature. I'm not. What about Len? She's going to leave Len to shrivel up and die? Len will be fine. Oh. No, he might be fine in the body, he's not in the head. He's one of these people that when somebody he loves leaves, they, they die. die. Look, look, things will continue because there will be a handover to a new vicar and I will make sure that you... I don't sure want a new vicar. You... Did you want a new vicar? No, I don't want a new vicar. Well, then let's not have a new vicar. Look, I know it's not easy to hear Here's this. the deal. It's a bit sooner than... You can have your little parish in Bristol or whatever, but you stay in the village here to live and you just commute to Bristol. That's a fair deal. That's very that fair. That is fair. You've got to give it to him. Look, much as I would love to stay in the village, and I really would, um, it, commuting just isn't practical, so I'm afraid I'm in no position to negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, do you know what? I've seen this coming for a long time. Actually, I'm surprised it hasn't ha happened sooner, you know. Your ability just to drop everything like it never mattered or existed is baffling. Mm. And actually, you're good at it and you've turned it into an art form and we walked right into that. Pulling the wool over our eyes since the very first day you got here. Well, do you know what? Good luck with it all. Hope it works out for you. Okay, do you want to say anything? Did you know about this as well? Is this all a thing that's been going on for a just long time? Just leave it, Curtin, come on. No. Just go. We're going to have it out now. Come on. Let down by the lot of you. I knew they would find it hard hearing the news, but hopefully over time they'll be able to process this news and, and understand why I've made the decision I made. I would rather kill him than let another parish have him. I wholeheartedly agree with If that. we can't have him, then I don't want anyone to have him. I don't even want his family to have him. If he thinks it's going to be all hugs and kisses and fairly wells, then he's lost the plot, cos we ain't going to make it easy for him. No way. You know, especially when he's just prepared to piss everything up the wall like a piss artist. 
He has no idea what Bristol's like. He thinks it's going to be all lollipops and candy lanes, but it's not. It's all just smackheads and knife crime. Vicar, look at the hole that me and Porkchop got. Where did he get all this from? There's a hell of a lot of electricals here. Oh, just going door to door. Kerry, that's really not in the spirit of harvest. <laughs> Why can't I trust you to do anything without taking it to the extreme? Because it's for a good cause. Where did you get this waffle maker from? Oh, Curtin donated that. I bought this for Curtin for his new flat. Yeah, he said he didn't need it. What do you mean? Because uh, he's not going to bother with a flat. What? Yeah, he said, what's the point? Where did I put that? Oh, well, that's oh, just brilliant. To think I could have been of any use in Bristol when I can't even help here. Mm. Right. I want uh, everything here taken back right now. What, even the tins? Of course not the tins. Stop being so bloody churlish. Vicar, it's getting is... really boring, June. What the fuck? Do you see that? The vicar has lost it. I never ever seen him like that before. Like he properly. There was one minute where I thought he was going to spark out June. She was stood there shaking like that. But yeah, I I think he's going to bottle go in Bristol, which is good. I, uh, I thought I was ready to leave the village, but, um, I, I think it's all just a big mistake. Things here are falling apart. Curtin's given up his flat. I'm shouting at June. I, I'm clearly not the right person for this Bristol job. I've never seen the back of someone's head. It's so sad. Yeah. It's really funny. Sounds funny. It was. Sounds it. The thing about the vicar is that he believes in everyone else, but he doesn't believe in himself. And as soon as he gets a bit of self-doubt in his head, it eats away at him. So I know if we lay just one more guilt trip on him, he'll crumble like a Jenga in a hurricane. And we'll forget about Bristol and leaving the village and everything will just go back to normal, which is all I really want. You sure you want to do this? Yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. But one thing I have learnt from the vicar is that sometimes the thing you want isn't necessarily the right thing to do. Vicar, can we have a word? Yes, of course, come in. Is everything OK? You know you've got to go, don't you, Vicar? Yeah? You're going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I just hope they realise what they got. Yeah. You're a legend. But you are annoying as well. <laughs> really annoying. <laughs>